Planting a jar of hearts And tearing love apart I remember all those years ago when I made the decision to get a Super Famicom. A mate of mine had decided that was what he wanted for Christmas 1991 and I could see why. Mean Machines had been reviewing Super Famicom games at the rate of about one a month and all of them looked impressive. Well, apart from Ultraman that is. And I was impressed by the screenshots of games and the reviews of the games in the magazines. But I was a Sega guy at my core. I had always been a fan of Sega in the arcades and at home. But the force was strong with the Super Famicom. And the six button layout of the pad made it seem like a logical choice for a home port of Street Fighter 2. But I wasn't going to sell my Mega Drive to get one. So I asked my parents if I could get one for Christmas and they agreed on the condition that I didn't need to send away mail order for it. So I found an importer in Edinburgh who sold them and we took a drive up there and when I got there F-Zero was running and it looked absolutely amazing. But this was the second game I ever clapped my eyes on that was running on Nintendo's grey little box of goodness. Super Castlevania 4. And this game was offered to me as a game that could be supplied with the machine. But I opted for Super Mario World instead. But not before I sampled Super Ghouls and Ghosts, F-Zero and others. But as soon as I got home, I immediately started to save up my spare cash for this game and I got my copy on Japanese import just after Christmas 91. Super Castlevania 4 is a side-scrolling platform game where the player takes control of Simon through 11 long levels, which I will allude to a little later. Players begin the game with 5 lives, and it ends in a game over once they have lost them all. The player will lose a life if all of Simon's health gauge is depleted, or if he falls into a hole, or if they do not finish the level within the time limit. The health gauge can be restored through food items that can be dropped from candles and breakable blocks, or with the magic crystal, which is received after defeating the boss at the end of each level. But on first playthrough, you can collect literally hundreds of hearts, which in any other game replenishes life, but not in Castlevania. It's no wonder I kept dying too quickly in those early playthroughs. And so, when you initially start playing, you could be forgiven for thinking that it's a little tame and very slow. This is not a fast-paced platformer by any means. The game seems to go on and on, and when you think you are progressing, then the map screen shows up between the levels and it just flips and turns into page 2. And you are left thinking, how bloody big is this game? Let's be honest, Super Castlevania is a huge game for the early 90s consoles, and with Super Ghouls and Ghosts being massive, and Super Mario World was even bigger than those, my first impression of Nintendo games was that they certainly provided value for money as they were all so effing huge. But the pacing of the game is quite off-putting for me. I like my games to run at a more arcade kind of pace in those days. And after paying £45 for the game, I felt I had no choice but to persevere with it. And boy, was I glad I did. Super Castlevania 4 
It was a reasonably early launch title for the Super Famicom, and it turned out to be one of its very best as well. The visuals make good use of colouring, but on the whole, they were not that impressive. But then, some levels were designed to show off the power of the Super Famicom. Like this rotating room here, and the background rotation used here, to make it look like the whole room is moving around you. Other visual standouts were the chandeliers and the map screen, which looked awesome as it zoomed in to show your path to take. The game is kind of split into two phases, with the first five levels all featuring visuals reminiscent of old 19th century spooky village surroundings and creepy castle grounds. And then the rest of the game, inside the castle, has a wide variety of backgrounds, from the castle hallway to the dungeons, the ballroom and the clock tower ascension. And while I still do have some reservations on the visuals, I do admit, they do capture the look and feel of a typical Dracula movie setting. The best feature of this game in my opinion is the music. This soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks I have ever heard in a game from the 16-bit era. The jump up in sound quality from the Mega Drive to this was staggering. I had read in magazines how good the music was in games like Actraiser, but when I heard this for the first time, I couldn't believe it. Everything sounds orchestral, but it's the quality of all the instruments being used that is absolutely fantastic. From even before the game begins, when the story intro plays with this creepy sounding tune. This tune uses a little more synth to create this supernatural sound, but when you hear it, you know you are in for a real treat. And when the game finally begins, level 1 this theme right here, Simon's theme, is just superb. For me, it's right up there with some of the best opening level tunes of all time. And what a way to start the game. Honestly, the music is so good in this game that I even overlook the average sound effects. And it's a real pity the Super Famicom did not come with a headphone socket because I could have listened to this music for hours. And Simon's theme is one of the tunes I do regularly go back and listen to on YouTube. But now, back to the gameplay. The game will reward patient players but I felt like the slow beginning would put a lot of people off. I know it put me off, and I did have to stick with it. But see once you get into the castle, the game just kicks into high gear. It's either that, or you have just acclimatised to the game by that point. Thank <laughs> you. 
platform games are not really my thing, and they never really were, but I did prefer this kind over the cutesy kind, and there was the right balance of action and platform jumping in Castlevania 4 to keep interested. Again, once you get into the castle that is. The difficulty is crazy tough in later levels, and you will find yourself dying a lot through trial and error as you try and make progress. And the balance of the gameplay leans more to the action. There is still more than enough platformy, jumpy, jumpy sections to get on my nerves, and I died loads and loads playing this through. I always thought it was Dracula who was supposed to be immortal, not the Belmonts. I have a mate who is right into Dracula and vampires and stuff like that, and he told me this game perfectly captured that whole Bram Stoker's Dracula thing just right. And then, back in my school days, he would always want to play this game. I didn't appreciate all of that vampire stuff at the time, but now, after seeing Bram Stoker's Dracula and reading the book, I do agree with him on it. Apart from one thing that always goes awry with depictions of Dracula, Dracula is always portrayed as a horror figure, when really it's a love story. I guess that's why all of these hearts appear everywhere in the game. As the years have went by, I had developed an even greater appreciation for this game, not just because of the memories I have of it and the times that I played it, but it's the little details and all the effort that went into making the game great. The challenge is tough but balanced I feel, and even though there is no difficulty setting in the game's options, it's still very challenging. And being a typical Konami game, you have to play it through more than once, but Castlevania just seems to loop and loop, and with each loop it gets harder and harder. If anyone has ever seen the true ending, can you please put a comment below stating how many times it has to be played through? That would be great. Super Castlevania 4 is an amazing game on the Super Famicom, and it's almost hard to believe it's over 30 years old now. But it is a game that I can wholeheartedly recommend you go and play now. Just please persevere with the boring, slow-paced opening levels because what awaits is well worth it. And that was my look back at Super Castlevania 4 on the Super Famicom. If you liked this video, then please do give me a sub and a thumbs up, or maybe even a comment or two below about your memories of Super Castlevania 4. And a massive thank you to all of those who have subscribed and commented on my channel. Your feedback, comments and support really do go a long way in helping the channel grow and I do appreciate all of you. So it's a huge thank you from me. And that's all from me folks. Thanks for watching.